I'm going to describe a spreadsheet that does the equilibrium calculation for the ammonia formation reaction. It does it by minimizing the Gibbs free energy. And the spreadsheet uses two approaches. The more general approach where the heat reaction depends on temperature. And so this first equation here shows how the heat reaction at the temperature. So the Gibbs free energy here is a function of temperature and it's calculated from this partial derivative where the heat of reaction is also a function of temperature. And this is the heat of reaction in terms of heat of reaction our reference temperature, which is 298 Kelvin. And then this difference in heat capacities between products and reactants, where these are a function of temperature, typically a form A plus B times T plus C times T squared plus D times T cubed. A shortcut method is to use the calculation for the Gibbs free energy as a function of temperature in terms of the Gibbs free energy at a reference temperature, 298. And this term where this is a constant and we use the heat reaction at 298. So let's look at this spreadsheet to see how to do the calculation. So in the spreadsheet, you input the temperature where you're interested in determining equilibrium and the pressure and then the starting number of moles of each of the three components. And what the spreadsheet then calculates at equilibrium is the final number of moles and then calculates mole fractions and the way the spreadsheet works is to minimize the Gibbs free energy. So this is the Gibbs free energy calculation, some of these three terms. And the spreadsheet has details that explain, one, how to use the spreadsheet. And then the equations used. In this case, we're using delta H at 298, a constant value. The spreadsheet that's more complicated is the one in which the heat reaction depends on temperature. In that case, we have to have the heat capacity terms, the, the constants for each of the three components. And so the calculations are more complicated, but the idea is the same. And the explanation, the equations then are more complicated and they're shown also in the spreadsheet in the details. The final thing about the spreadsheet, we're going to minimize the sum of the Gibbs free energy, and we have a constraint. And the constraint is that the number of nitrogen atoms and the number of hydrogen atoms that we start with have to be the same as the number that we end up. So let's try and run the spreadsheet. What we're going to do is use solver to minimize, and, and I've already set it up. So if I go into data and solver, I'm going to minimize the cell where we have the Gibbs free energy. That's J8 where the sum of the atoms at the beginning of nitrogen and of hydrogen has to be the same as the end. So those are two constraints that the difference between difference between this, the values out and the values in has to be close to zero. So if I run solver and found the solution, number of moles over here, same beginning at the end, here are the mole fractions of equilibrium. And if we scroll down, in the spreadsheet, where this is the heat reaction function temperature, it also calculate the equilibrium constant from the delta G. And we also can calculate the equilibrium constant from the mole fractions that we determine. And we get the same number, right? It's a different approach. We're not trying to determine the mole fractions by solving the values equal to the equilibrium constant, but instead by minimizing the Gibbs free energy. Well, if we raise the temperature to 800 and run solver again, now you see we've encountered an error and it's setting the number of moles out to zero, which of course is not possible. So what's happening is if we look down, the equilibrium constant is getting much, much smaller. So we have smaller amounts of ammonia at equilibrium. If we change this value, let's make it 0.1, and rerun solver. Now it's found the solution, and notice the solution is consistent that the equilibrium constant from delta G is the same as the ratio of the mole fractions. So it is sensitive to starting conditions, and if the value here, because of the small equilibrium constant at the higher temperature, it's a little more sensitive to getting a solution. Same approach works for the other sheet where delta H is not a function of temperature.